Hello! How's it going? Uh, it is me. I'm here, talking to the camera. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Uh, so, it is Thursday, May 12th, 2022, about 7 p.m. And I am on East Cesar Chavez Avenue, just east of downtown Austin. And today, I'm just gonna take you all on a little walk through this neighborhood, which is called East Cesar Chavez. As I mentioned before, we're on East Cesar Chavez Street right now. Um, you might be able to tell by the fact that I am very sweaty, that it is quite hot outside. It is like 90 degrees out at the moment, and it's been that warm for the past week or so. And it looks like it's only gonna get warmer from here for the foreseeable future, so that is exciting. <laughs> Last spring, I spent my first um, spring in Austin, and it was not this hot until after I had left for Chicago. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah, it's quite warm, and I'm spending a lot of more time in the pool. I recently purchased a paddleboard, so it's been fun taking that out on the lake. But yeah, uh, kind of unbearable to be out in the sun, especially. In the middle of the day when it gets really hot. It's even been getting up into the hundreds already. Um, so the plan is for this walk to turn left up here on Waller Street and then head to East 6th Street, which is probably the most interesting area of this neighborhood. That's where a lot of the bars and restaurants and other kind of entertaining places to go are located. So I'm gonna head up there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I kind of spontaneously decided I wanted to make this video, so I don't really have too solid of a plan of what I want to see or what I want to talk about, but we'll just see where it goes. I was recently watching the first video I filmed in Chicago last year, which was actually kind of like this video. I talked over it, and I think that was the first time I actually watched that video back because normally, I find the sound of my own voice to be extremely cringy, and I cannot take it. But yeah, I really enjoyed watching that video. It was, it was interesting seeing uh, the walk I did. I went from Millennium Park all the way to the West Loop, and then took the L to Garfield Park, where I spent last summer. And yeah, I thought I'd do something similar. It's kind of like a little time capsule of what's, what's going on with me right now in my life. Cool, so we can go ahead and cross right here, start heading up north on Waller Street, hopefully get away from all this traffic. Traffic in Austin is quite bad, and I try not to drive as much as possible. I live in the Riverside neighborhood, which is pretty close to downtown, and I can get pretty much everywhere I need to go on my bicycle, so that's usually what I'm doing. I biked here and it's probably faster to do that than it would have been to drive because of the traffic. Love making eye contact with people as I'm recording them. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with me in my life right now. I know if you're watching this video, you probably don't know me, but you might, <laughs> or you might have been following my channel and know a little bit about what I've been up to the past couple of years. So last summer, I spent the months of about June through August in Chicago, as I mentioned earlier, and. I was working at a music festival called the Grant Park Music Festival that puts on classical music performances at Millennium Park. And ever since then, since I got back to Austin about September of 2021, I've been working on getting a certificate in UX design and was able to do that and then I started looking for work in UX design and just over a month ago I got my first job as a UX designer and it's it's been great it's been a really positive adjustment in my life um, kind of the first time since 
quarantine started, I've really felt secure and stable, both financially and just, you know, professionally. Being able to support myself completely independently feels really nice. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with my life. I feel like I'm able to focus more on other things I care about beyond just, you know, having to worry about where I'm going to earn money and live. And that's great. I'm really grateful that it, it worked out that way. Um, so that being said, one of the things I want to give more attention to is this channel. You know, I do a lot of these videos solely for the purpose of my own nostalgia. I really want to look back one day and remember all the places I've been and, you know, just what my life was like because I, I really also want to live in a lot of places while I'm young. It's another goal of mine. But at the same time, with these videos, I would like to get a little bit more of a consistent audience going. So I've been thinking of ways that I might be able to strategically do that and still make the content that I want to make. So I'm planning on maybe being more active on other social media. I, I don't know if I want to do more of these videos where I'm speaking. I really do like having the videos where it's just, you know, the footage and the sounds of what's going on around me. But at the same time, this is this is fun as well. And I actually follow a few channels where all the content they do, they're just walking around, talking about the city they live in and whatever's going on. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. If you are watching this and you're someone who, you know, frequently watches my videos, you're subscribed to me, and you like the stuff that I make, definitely let me know what you're interested in seeing more of. Um, like I said earlier, I got a paddleboard, so I want to start making some content out on the lake. It's uh, so beautiful out on Lady Bird Lake in Austin. Right now, I am crossing these train tracks here, which is the only metro line in Austin currently, the red line, and it does not have a very large rider base at all. <laughs> I have not met one person who's ever actually ridden it, but I would like to take it one day just to see what it's all about. I know it goes up to Leander, which is a suburb in kind of like the north, northwest part of the city. Um, stops by the Austin Football Club Stadium, as well as the Domain. So, I also want to see a, a soccer game, so I might try to take the train up there when I get the chance. But yeah, um, we're about at 6th Street. This is it just ahead. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this neighborhood's called East Cesar Chavez. It's one of my favorite places to walk around. It is quite walkable, and the neighborhoods are Really interesting, lots of interesting architecture and cool murals and graffiti. It is one of the most gentrified areas in the city. It actually was notoriously um, a redlined district for much of the city's history. Um, so, you know, right now, if I look to the left, you'll see downtown Austin ahead. Um, and dividing downtown with this neighborhood is I-35, so everything east of there was basically where, um, you know, black people and other minorities were allowed to live, and yeah, thus this became a very poor and disenfranchised area, and actually it had like a lot of kind of, um, industrial zoning around the area, which you can still see remnants of as well. But nowadays, this is a very expensive place to live. If you have a house here, you are very wealthy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'd love to live here because <laughs> it's a great location now, um, considering that most of Austin is just very spread out. You have to have a car to get anywhere. Um, but right here, you're right by downtown. You can easily walk to there. You have access to tons of amenities. It's pretty nice. Um, yeah, like I said, the history, not the best, because you had 
a lot of people who had no choice but to live here and it was not great conditions for them and then once Austin started becoming this up-and-coming place and uh, real estate became a lot more valuable people wanted to live close to downtown people started buying up the land here making it too expensive for people to afford to live here or to pay their property how the property taxes if they already had homes in the area so I guess that's kind of the, the dark backstory here. But uh, we've made it to 6th Street. Here we are. I always thought this abandoned building was really cool. All these posters and graffiti. Don't know what used to be here. But it's always always changing with the, the posters and graffiti on the wall. I really like that. You know, Austin has a tons of murals, but also has tons of graffiti all over the place. And it's uh makes it a little less straight, especially with some of the more boring, uninteresting neighborhoods. They still are covered with stickers and graffiti and murals, so kind of improves the uh, curb appeal of the area. The Lucky Duck. Showing the Lucky Fan. Fan. <laughs> Big ass patio. Huge TV. Great cocktails. Like our famous espresso martini. Looks like fun. There's so many great bars in Austin. There's like no way any one person could visit all of them. And even though I'm not a big nightlife, dancing, clubbing kind of person. I really do like just going out and exploring and seeing what, you know, the city has to offer in, in the way of the nightlife stuff. A lot of the bars out here have really nice outdoor areas since the weather is usually warm. And a lot of food trucks are actually, you know, kind of connected along with these different bars and clubs. You know, they've got a fan blowing water out. Which is a smart idea to keep people <laughs> able to enjoy the outdoors even in this heat. Oh. I went for a run this morning for the first time in a couple months uh, and I was not very fast. <laughs> But um, trying to get back into it. Let's take a look at these stickers here on the stop sign. You can pretty much count on just about any sign or lamppost or anything being adorned with some sort of uh, creative sticker collection. What was what this little poster? Can't really read what it says, but I like the kind of psychedelic uh, Design of this full poster here. They got a QR code if you want to check that out. Let's see what we got up here. You'd love to see it. Um, see, I'm actually going to walk up north here and walk through this little alleyway up ahead. But yeah, I went for a run. Hopefully, going to make that a consistent thing. I've been trying to get up earlier. My job I have right now. Um, the UX design job, completely remote. So I work from home. I'm able to 
roll out of bed and just log on to my computer and be at work, which I really love. I hate a long commute. I think my tolerance for that is very low. I just, you know, even this past summer when I was taking the train to work, which I loved in Chicago, it took me about 40 minutes leaving my apartment to walking into my workplace. And that was too much. Like, I could be using this time to be doing so many other things. But, I mean, you know, the nice thing about a train is you can still read, be on your phone, like, do work. You're not forced to, you know, be, uh, you know, attentive, pay attention so you don't kill someone on the highway. Uh, which is kind of the case here. You don't really have any options other than driving unless you live close enough to your workplace to walk or bike or take the bus. But yeah, I've been getting up just at 8.55 a.m. a lot of the mornings because I start work at 9 and I tend to stay up pretty late and like to sleep in, but I want to maximize my day life. So much personality, so much flair. Uh, so we're, we're technically still on like This bar across the street is called the Grackle, named after the blackbirds here in Texas that make those crazy noises. What stickers do we have here? This one has a little 3D element to it with the, the googly eye. Don't know how they even reach up there to write that. <laughs> I really want to check this place out here, past this parking lot. Tamale House. I love tamales. And uh, if you go down 5th Street, you can see the back of it. It's kind of like a little hidden garden back there. Oh gosh, I'm so awkward when people like engage with me as I'm recording them. <laughs> I like totally caught them checking themselves out in the window and then they're like, oh shit, this guy's got a camera facing right at us. Look at this mural, it's so beautiful. Garage looking bar looks fun. Just a man casually painting on a canvas. This little skinny building is part of uh, Whistler's. This is another bar. There's so many places to check out. I just want to take a day and like go down Rainy Street, go down 6th Street, like just do a quick uh, 360 around the whole bar and 
check out what's going on. Uh, just to say I visited them all. And at some point I'm gonna try to turn right and then head down to the lake and then walk back to where I parked my bike on Cesar Chavez. so dark if I am like looking at the sun recording right now my DJI Osmo Pocket and it's very nice because it's like well, what is that? this big it's a camera see isn't that cool what's it called this is a DJI Osmo Pocket uh, how much uh, I think it was like 200 oh, that's not bad yeah I really like it. it's very convenient very discreet <laughs> I have a GoPro. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, what's the quality comparison? I say not quite as good. I don't like the colors I get on it, and you know, you can see the contrast is kind of yeah. it's really dark if it's like bright in the background. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like the GoPro. You get like the the wide lens. This yeah. doesn't have that. Okay. But you know, it's nice for the, just being so small. Yeah, I've used a GoPro too, and mine like has so much glitches and like messes up my footage all the time. So. I prefer this. Okay. <laughs> kind of stuff do you shoot? Um, vlog stuff. Um, I'm a comedian, so I'm trying to do like behind the scenes shit of Ooh, cool. what I do. Um, yeah, like YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Are you on Instagram? My phone's behind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check out your stuff. Yeah, I'm about to do an open mic with the bolster right now. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you a photographer? Like, what's your, what's your? I make videos, just kind of like walking around the city, doing That's like cool. point of view videos. Oh, I'd love to check out some of your stuff because that's kind of... Totally, yeah. I'll send you a DM. Cool. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. You love making new friends casually as I record people randomly <laughs> walking down the street. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna watch this back and be like, how was that social interaction? I'm like so self-critical of the way I interact with strangers. But I'm like, this, this is chill. I'm like talking to him about this camera, it's cool. Also, if I put posts on YouTube, basically I'm gonna watch that, so. Nice, nice, very lovely. Also, can I even see myself right now? Because I can't really see what I'm recording when it's facing me. And I know the sun is directly behind me, so I don't know how that's going to look. But we shall find out when I get home and watch this back. See, suddenly, this walk has gotten so much more boring. There's nothing to see here except for these ugly uh, gentrification buildings. <laughs> Villas on sticks. I wonder how much an apartment costs in this building right here. My friends and I 
uh, actually trying to find a new place to to move in the um, the fall. And we'd really love to live in this neighborhood actually because of the location. We want to live closer to downtown. Um, but we're also looking back in Riverside as well as South Congress and the Zilker areas. All very uh, in-demand <laughs> locations because of the, the, the proximity to, to all the, the cool stuff. It really doesn't have to be that way though. Like in Chicago, all the neighborhoods are, are so interesting and you know exciting and for like global standards the public transportation in chicago is not great but compared to this <laughs> where you, you basically have the bus and that's about it and the bus is you know it'll it'll get you where you need to go eventually but it's like clearly the priority here for getting people around is is cars and when everything's so spread apart, you have no choice but to drive everywhere, unless you live in one of those few neighborhoods that are close enough to downtown to be walkable. There's so many things I love about Austin, also some stuff that's not so great. If you talk to people who've lived here longer, I've only been here about a year, but people who've been here you know, their whole lives or even just like the past five to 10 years would constantly say, Austin's not as nice as it used to be. All these people have been moving in from California, all these people moving in with tech jobs and, and all that and really changing the culture, making it less affordable and less interesting. Really testing the limits of the whole keep Austin weird mantra. But to me, Compared to all the other places I've lived, there's no place like Austin. Uh, so many unique things. And, you know, I, I'm sure that they're right that it used to be a lot better in a lot of ways, a lot, a lot more um, of a interesting counterculture kind of identity. And I regret that I haven't been able to experience that to the full extent, but I'm, I'm still grateful to, to be here now experience it the way it is because that trend of people moving in the gentrification the rising prices of housing that's only continuing at a at an even more accelerated rate now so i'm not sure how much longer i'll be in the city actually definitely trying to stay at least another year as i said i'm looking for a place to stay with some friends but yeah, they tried to raise my rent by $300 the last time I renewed and I negotiated it down to just 100 in my my studio. Uh, but yeah, I, I, at that rate, it's going to be like New York City, Washington, D.C., San Francisco levels in the next two or three years. And yeah, I, I have a, a tough time justifying that it's worth it. There's a lot of great places to live in the country. And not all of them are so insanely overpriced. This summer, I can't believe I didn't mention this earlier, but this summer I'm planning on going up and staying in Minneapolis for a couple months. And I've never been there before, but I hear it's a really awesome place when it's not freezing cold. <laughs> So I'm excited to go there. One of my friends from high school actually lives there now and I'm going to be staying with them. And yeah, I'll definitely be recording some videos, exploring. Hopefully I have a lot of time to make some content up there. But yeah, that'll be really fun. My dream is to one day be completely nomadic and spend a period of my life just moving from place to place every few months or so. And... Yeah, I, l I love traveling, but I even more so love being able to stay in one place for an extended period of time, you know, like three to six months, so I can actually experience kind of what it's like to be in that place, if that makes sense. <laughs> what it's like to be a, a local more so, like when you're on vacation, you can, you can kind of get a glimpse a window into life in a different place but when you're actually there like doing your grocery shopping doing your everyday life 
you can really feel out how different places are from each other. And now that I have a job where I work on my computer, all I have to do is log on from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time and do my work. I can live wherever I want in this world. <laughs> and that is a very exciting prospect for me. My next kind of goal on this whole plan is to find a group of, um, you know, similarly able people to go on these adventures with me because I'd like to maintain some consistent relationships even if I am moving around a lot so it would be nice to have you know kind of a, a group of nomads kind of going around and exploring this world together so you know if that's something you're interested in person watching this video and you think you might be able to do that definitely hit me up <laughs> let me know let's make some plans because I'm trying to trying to get this group together now Alrighty, passing 3rd Street now. Oh gosh, <laughs> that dog scared me. Hello, friend. What's this sticker? What do we have here? It's so high up, I cannot really see it. What is that? What does that say? I don't know. I feel like if you're watching this and you don't live in Austin, you're gonna be like, there's stickers on stop signs everywhere. Your city's not special, but I don't know. I noticed it for the first time living here. I think it's pretty special and I enjoy it. it makes it more interesting just walking around and seeing all this random, graffiti and stickers and all that. Got a fire truck? Hopefully, nothing too serious. All right, what do we have here? Down with phony progressives oppose imperious politicians who back the Israeli occupation and genocide against Palestinians. That is so interesting. That is not what I thought this was gonna be when it was an anti-AOC, Greg Kassar post. Because these are, AOC is, you know, obviously one of the most progressive people in Congress. I'm kind of on the same camp of thinking she doesn't go far enough with the way she's, you know, I don't know, we don't have to get into it. <laughs> uh, but Greg Kazar, he's, um, he's about to be my congressman here in District 35 of Texas. Um, and, you know, he's going to also be, I guess, a member of the squad, maybe, or like he's a Justice Democrat the same as AOC so we'll see how that goes but this is interesting that people are so far to the left that they're posting up this literature calling out people who are the furthest left politicians in Congress for not being left enough I guess I support that I, I, I agree and then we have Bart Simpson crying into his sweater sleeve There's some Christian things happening over here at the, what does it say? Christ Ray Church, Cristo Ray Church. Cristo meaning Christ, Ray meaning King, Church meaning Church. And then there's like food, <laughs> some sort. I wonder what's gonna happen here. Oh. Interesting. I'm intrigued. All 
Alright, and we're about over to Cesar Chavez Street again. I want to take a look at this graffiti across the roads. I'm going to cross here. No war! I agree. What does this say? <laughs> I don't have time to read these memes, but take a look at that later. Again, the no war. You got it right, my friend. Let's see, I want to start walking back to the west, but the sun is so bright, I don't want to be walking directly into it. Let's, let's keep on going down to the lake. There's another really awesome mural right there. See as well. So yeah, how's it going? If you're watching this, please do comment because I highly doubt many people are going to watch this through. <laughs> because why would you? Um, but if you are, and you feel some kind of way about it, if you have any thoughts, let me know. Um, because I really want to know what people are thinking. <laughs> also, trying to just totally act as if, um, I am a ghost walking through the world and no one is noticing me just randomly talking to myself <laughs> in this camera. See it? You see, it's unfortunate how that post is like right in front of that mural because it's really cool, but it's hard to get a good picture of it because the, that lamp post. Yesterday I was walking and I saw a lamp post that was just totally disconnected from the ground. I took a video, so maybe I'll cut that over right here and show you what I'm talking about. But it was so confusing to me when I saw it because I was thinking, how is, how is this staying up. I guess the tension of the uh, fucking wires above were keeping it hanging, but that seemed very hazardous to me. Um, kind of bizarre, but that was also in this neighborhood just a few blocks away from here. Should have walked by there to get it on this video. Looking at this guy's Instagram now. His handle is underscore Jet G. <laughs> you see that? I see myself in the reflection. Um, so I go give him a follow. Apparently he's a stand-up here in Austin, so that's pretty cool, pretty special. Let's cross here. Looks like there's enough shade on the street we can get away without walking directly into the sun. So at this point, I am south of my bike, <laughs> and the goal is to just get back there so I can ride home. I was literally just anyhow. Oh, I just saw you! Hey! Just making a video. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna talk to these people. Just walking around, nothing special. We were just in your video. Yeah, <laughs> what's up? You, you cool being on it? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> what are your names? I'm Sophie. Anna. Nice to meet you. I'm OC. Hi, OC. Are yeah. you enjoying Austin? Yeah, I love it. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Illinois originally, but nice. I live here now. Oh, yeah. You live here? Yeah. Nice. Y'all in Austin too? Or just I visiting? Am. I just moved here, but yeah. he's visiting. I'm, in, I'm from Denver. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Welcome. Yeah. You enjoying it so far? I am. 
Yes, it's super fun. Yeah, lots of fun stuff yeah. to do. Yeah. But yeah. Well, enjoy your walk. Totally, yeah. If you guys want to see this video, it's uh, my channel on YouTube is Lomas ATX. L O M A S. Lomas yeah. ATX. Yeah. All right, we'll check it Are out. For TikTok? sure. Uh, I'm not yet. I need to get you on there. Gotta get on I TikTok. know, yeah. Honestly, this will be perfect. Like, just you walking around. Yes. Oh, people would love it. Get on ATX TikTok, man. I Don't totally will. will love it. Well, nice to meet you guys. Have... Right. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a good night. Another successful social interaction. I love myself. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, people here are so friendly as well compared to other places I've lived. Um, I lived in Washington DC and I think the whole Northeast area is just notoriously unfriendly. I once broke my leg in DC um, on my rollerblades. I was going down a hill. This was um, April of 2020. So mid pandemic, but it was in a busy park. Lots of people saw it happen. It was really bad <laughs> I was very hurt and most people just kept on walking like tried to ignore the fact that it happened but there was one man who was you know right next to me when I fell on the ground with my broken leg I'm going to turn around because I don't want to encounter these girls again <laughs> ah! anyway <laughs> um, I fell down and my leg was very broken and this man who you know could not get away without acknowledging that he was right there okay i'm pausing right now for for the music there's some kind of party happening right here i love to see it beautiful <laughs> okay finishing this not very exciting story i broke my leg this man right next to me he stopped and was like, are you okay? Because clearly I was not okay. And I said, I don't know, man. I think I just broke my leg. Fully pretended like he did not hear what I just said and kept on walking. And that's just, I think, uh, a good parable to represent kind of the, the vibe of everyone who lived up there. And when I moved here, it was completely, completely different. Um, people, you know, strangers will come up and talk to you compliment you just like start up a conversation talk about whatever and I think people are generally a lot nicer and I don't know less threatening or assuming uh, that you're gonna have an anta antagonistic uh, interaction if you ever do engage with someone you don't know <laughs> and I really appreciate that I remember when I was first moving in when I moved here and I was just staying at Airbnb I was unpacking my stuff, um, it was all in boxes and like, just like, you know, putting it in my temporary home. And I drove from there to the grocery store to pick up some groceries and this car behind me was honking and um, like I could see them like waving at me and I thought they were like, I don't know what I thought, I thought they were like trying to... I don't know, do something with bad intentions to me. And I was like stressed out, like these people are trying to run me off the road. I was like trying to like speed away from them. And they finally like pulled up next to me and they like had their window down. They're like, yo, 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 there's a box on the back of your car. Because I had left, you know, one of my boxes just on my car as I was unpacking. And then, you know, just a block away from the place I was staying. They were like, oh shit this guy he doesn't know he has this thing on the back of his car and I just thought that was so nice um, that they um, wanted to warn me about that maybe they were just concerned about um, it falling off and causing a traffic accident <laughs> but it was just a tiny box anyway was that an interesting story I felt that was a good representation to kind of contrast the story of the man in DC who could not be bothered to give a single fuck about the fact that I broke my leg right next to him. Oh god. <laughs> We're making so many friends today. 
Um, I know I'm about to run out of space on my SD card. Oh yeah, I can actually see it coming down. I have about seven minutes left, so we're probably gonna go right up to the end. If you are one of the three people I encounter on this walk and you actually try to watch this video to find yourself, awesome. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> um, and hit me up whenever. I need more friends. And also if you wanna travel the world with me as well, I'm open to that too. Hit me up. Drop me a line. And they're right as well. I do need to get on TikTok. I um, occasionally will look at TikTok. Um, you know, just I don't post things, but I watch videos and I see a lot of Austin stuff. Just people um, being like, top five best bars, Austin, top 10 cool things to do in Austin. I don't know. I don't even know what kind of videos. They're just like, I'm in Austin and that is the premise of this video and it gets people to watch it because Austin's a cool and interesting place. So. That could totally be a great way to drive more people to check out the stuff that I make over here. Also, Lomas ATX is not a good name. Um, I need to think of something better. I just don't know what to call my channel. because I don't really know how to describe the videos that I make either. You heard me do it twice. I, I just say, I make videos just walking around, point of view, perspective, videos. I don't even know. But, yeah, definitely need to get more of an online presence for this channel. I think that, that'll help find the people who are actually interested in this kind of stuff. Lots of trees in Austin as well. Another great thing about this city. Got like a mariachi situation happening in someone's backyard over here. That's pretty cool. Look at these plants. Look at how big that is compared to my hand. Oh, I just stabbed myself. That was wild. I remember when I first moved to Austin, I was amazed at the fact that they're just cacti and palm trees that are here existing. Although a lot of the palm trees are no longer here since the freeze that happened um, last February. I don't think the palm trees are technically native to this far north in Texas, but they were here and the snow killed them and now they're gone. <laughs> so I got to enjoy them for a few months. Feels pretty special. This tree is beautiful. It's called like a powder puff something. I don't remember. I remember I saw this at the Garfield Park um, Conservatory, like greenhouse thing that they have in Chicago when I lived there. And here it is, just existing outside. Aren't plants amazing? Um, yeah, probably not gonna make it back to my bike. Got like a couple more blocks to go, and I know I have two minutes left on this camera. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and start heading um, up north again towards Cesar Chavez. And it's been a pleasure going on this walk with you. <laughs> 
Um, it actually feels pretty nice out now that it's nice and shady. This is an interesting fence in front of this house. <laughs> Very welcoming with the windows. <laughs> All right, I've got 50 seconds left. Let's see how far I can go to Scissor Shop. Is I'm gonna even make it to this intersection? Let's find out. This mural on this little gas station is cool. like this lady with all the eyes all over her body. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that you are doing well and staying safe out there in the world.